Welcome back, Trinidad and Tobago. Well, this is our Man Enough segment. Joining us on set for this particular segment is feminist and activist. He's also a research and teaching assistant at the Institute for Gender and Development Studies at the UWI, Amilka Sanatan. Welcome. Hi, good morning. Good morning. So you are in a perfect position to tell us your observation on where we are today as a nation as it pertains to International Women's Day. What are your thoughts? Well, I wouldn't see it as a perfect position. It's an allied one where I stand in solidarity to the struggle that is led by the women's and feminist movements. So, for example, tomorrow there will be the International Women's Day Rally at the Port of Spain, Savannah, which is bringing together over 50 civil society organizations as well as state representation to think creatively about what are the priorities for women. So very important in our developments to think about, you know, like Marshall Montano, he said, forward is not enough. Development can't be so narrow that it's just economics, just economic growth. How does the social side of development being advanced? And women's issues are economic, but it's also about safety. So one of the things is like, you may climb the corporate ladder, the social ladder, but you can't walk down the streets with a sense of safety. That is an issue for our development. And that's why International Women's Day is a time to celebrate these great figures in our lives, but also to think very um, deeply about the society we want to have. In terms of gender rules, and you highlighted a number of issues there. We talk about priorities for women, safety being something that we need to focus on. Uh, we've been hearing a lot about domestic violence, violence against women in general. Do you That's think right. as a society we are having enough conversations? Do you think that we are just placing band-aids on issues as opposed to addressing it from the, the root or the core of the problem? For instance, we talk about men in society. A lot of fingers are being pointed at men in terms of the, they being held accountable for some of the violence that, that are, you know, are put treated towards the women. So is the issue here that men are the culprit? So is it that we're not doing enough to address the issues that men face? Okay, no problem. So on one hand, violence is gendered. And we have to see it like that. We want to look at in terms of the outcomes of violence, perpetrators and victims, right, are very much involved with men, right? In terms of women are victims by men's hands, but also in terms of the drivers of violence, men are also victims by men. So the issue of crime and violence means to address the issue of violent masculinities. But to the first question that you ask is around, we need to have these conversations. In the absence of it, we will have a very sad and it's very unfortunate for reality. But sometimes we see that gap between the policy that exists that empower people and the gap is where the execution and the idea that justice could happen. And that is what we really need to fill that gap. So the hashtag Me Too campaign or it's time, time's up and so on. What it has shown that sexual harassment legislation may have existed in your country, but that doesn't mean you didn't know that it was pervasive. We have domestic violence legislation, but it doesn't mean that they can make an intervention to change the attitudes that lead men into violence. And that is the kind of work that we have to do. So much more conversations, but as well as taking that action and make sure that we have a strong justice system that can make people feel safe. Now, uh, just last week, uh, one newspaper article that was written by Randall Fields is the president of the Single Fathers Association. He mentioned that men don't really have avenues in which to vent. Most of the times they take it either to the rum shop or the barber shop. What are your thoughts on that? Well, for Randall Fields, I mean, he has his own trajectory and approach to thinking about gender relations. Where I stand is that, in fact, men have many areas in the public space, especially as young boys. You know, like I, sometimes I think you ever go to a recreational park, I think there's invisible fun that says no girls allowed here. If you drive around on this Sunday, I'm pretty sure you won't find five, six girls sweating or occupying a pavilion with their legs open and talking about men or the women. So the idea of the public sphere is a space that is male dominated. And in fact, if I read a newspaper today on all of them, I would tell you it is a man's world in terms of the advertisements, in terms of the members of parliament who speak, in terms of the corporate organizations and leadership and the celebration of these key figures. But when they say it's a man's world, I would also say it's an unfair world. That means it shouldn't be. Mm. As it relates to anger issues, do you think we have a problem with that? Yeah, we have angry people all the time, and sometimes I see it in the context of road rage. Oh. But we do need to think mm. about anger is also an emotion. You know, sometimes we say women are emotional, anger is also an emotion. And we need to have, on one hand, that kind of emotional intelligence. But secondly, we need to see that violence does not resolve anything. And part of it is the idea that some people are less than us. So like one of the things is like, violent men is not just somebody who in this gangster culture and so on, it's a lot of men who don't meet the standards of masculinity in our culture. 
become violent to women and children or even lesser men. And that is the way we need to transform these ideas and ideals of what it is to be a man. So being man enough is a question I tell people you're a man by a biological definition and you're just doing your thing. There's a spectrum of expression you can engage in. How many Ralph Laurens we denied being born in Trinidad and Tobago because we didn't let our children play with high heels? How many people for Christmas we gave guns to and said, I know you won't be a gangster, I know you won't be a murderer, just letting you be a boy. But then give your child a spatula for Christmas and say, I know you could cook and fry egg or I don't eat meat, but you could you know, fry barge in the morning and so on, right? So how many times in our socialization we excuse things around violence and see it as normal and natural and sometimes inevitable? We need to change that. Wow, that very well said. <laughs> Uh, as it relates to, to anger, as you said, how can we begin to address it? Do you recommend counseling? Do you recommend um, a, a heavier parenting role or even in schools? What do you recommend? So sure, I think the first thing is effective communication, having a presence in people's lives. I was talking to Gregory Stone Seal in the um, Black Panther line, right, in the cinema. He's an advocate and activist around men's issues. And he said something to me that stuck out, you know, like a young man told him, Sir, I don't need things and need time so have any presence of you know progressive men in your life who could give you alternative other than violence to deal with it second we need to have spaces to feel vulnerable and that means we need to have very much democratic decisions allow people to have difference of opinions but agree on a process and i think that is important and last time we think about anger i'm no way a psychologist and so on who could prescribe how best to make an intervention but a recognition of mental health the same way um, one may have a sneeze or a cough, the same way in your mind they might not be as healthy as they need to be right now. And that means we should always give support to people to improve themselves mentally and also address issues of trauma and abuse that we are facing in their lives that we think are small and we have gotten over, but they continue to affect us. Now let's switch a little bit to gender roles as it relates to women who are excelling in terms of their academics and their career as well. A lot of women are now managers in, in top positions, uh, even CEOs and, and all these different yeah. things. But is it that they've been advancing, the, the, their responsibilities have just been increasing as it relates to even their responsibilities at home? And what, what are some of these struggles that they face, one? And then what is the role of other family members, including the fathers and husbands? Yeah, well, gender roles is a quite a complex thing in the Caribbean, especially seeing that for the past 30 years in particular, we have so many women accessing higher education at very high levels, which is contrary to some world trends. So we have a lot of women very present in middle management, but when it comes to the top, right, we need to really rethink and radicalize the way we see boardrooms as being more gender equal. That's the first thing. The second thing is, even though more women have moved into the middle class and become professionals, what it has happened is that men haven't taken up the work at the home. So what they have is working class women who are serving those needs, or those middle class women as well who are into the public sphere. So women are always, in a way, in just a new form by class now, um, perpetuating those needs in the home. So the Share the Care campaign by United Nations is very important. The Caribbean Male Action Network, Cariman, had a campaign around sharing the care in the region. And there are ways we could really rethink about the ideas of fatherhood and also being a contributor to the household. But if I just want to make this point, men on their own, because I live on my own for quite a long time, I used to live on a hall and everything, the apartment, mm. you cook and clean and wash for yourself, you know. Mm. It's Good until you move in with, you know, your, your mommy, I mean, it's like this kind of de facto mommy had, like my mommy used to feed me and wash my clothes. You start to mm. kind of recast these yeah. gender roles, which is quite traditional and not as self-reliant as yes. it was before. That's a great point. Oh gosh, it's such a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you no so problem. much, Emilka Samatan. We hope to have you back sometime later on this month.